Deep down, I always knew I'd do an m on video. Maybe celebrate a milestone, an anniversary, maybe to fill for a week where I have no other ideas to make. Eminon and this channel are connected. She's on almost every video of mine and that's not unintentional. Eminon is connected with this channel because Eminon is connected with me. She is my favorite character of all time, after all. I just never knew how to make a video on Eminon, that's why it took me so long to do it. I, it's not like I never had anything to say about the character or the story, because I do, and I'm going to say it all in this video. It's just that I don't want to do a 10 minute video to convince you to read Eminon. The story is short, the plot is shorter, it's not me telling you what the story is about that's gonna make you want to read it, because if I do, I'll tell you everything. The best way to convince people to read Eminon from my experience is to tell them two things. One, I love it tremendously, and two, it takes about 20 minutes to read the first story. The main story, Memories of Eminon, it's one volume long, a short volume long. Why don't you just read it and take your own conclusions, see why I love it by yourself? No need for a full video on it, really, and so that's what I'm gonna ask first and foremost. If you haven't read at least the very first volume, do it. It's a close story, you don't need to read the sequels. It was written to be that just that one story, Memories of Eminon, and you can tell that. So pause this video, go read the manga, and I'll see you back in 20 minutes, okay? Okay, so one, two, three, and are you back? Alright, let's talk about Eminon. Have you ever had that one brief moment with someone? I don't even mean romantically, just one moment. It can be an hour or a day that you just share with someone. Someone you never knew existed before, that just by a sheer coincidence your lives align and you realize that everyone is truly alive, that every single person that crosses your path is real, and this one just happens to be part of you for a little while, and then they're gone, never to be met again. It's harder now, I think, with social media and everything, but it can still happen. A moment in an anime convention where you just meet someone who has the same taste of you, a line in hospital was taking way longer than it should, or my most recent example, festival where someone thought that I was the only other person there to watch Nine Inch Nails, and so we just spent that entire concert together. I don't even know their name, never did. When I was a kid I went to an hot spring with my grandma for about a week, and I met this other kid, he was a giant fan of Pokemon, and he let me borrow his Game Boy. We talked about Pokemon cards, and I spent pretty much every moment of that week just talking, and playing with that other kid. I never saw him again, it's been probably 20 years since then, but I still remember him, because those connections, even if short, even if real for only a moment, they can stay with you forever. I love sharing those moments with people, and memories of Eminon more so than anything else is that moment. More so than a manga about a girl with special powers, Memories of Eminon, not the sequels, is about a boy down on his luck, who just happens to share a moment with someone very special. The majority of the manga is a dinner, a conversation. If it wasn't for the last couple of pages in the manga, you could even argue that the story that Eminon tells you, it's fake. Who is Eminon but a representation of a random person in your life? Beautiful, yes, but ordinary looking, nameless like all the other people who cross on the street, full of interesting stories that you most likely never know. And even if you do, what assures you they are true? Does it even matter at this point? You'll never meet him again, i rather just believe in this beautiful meeting. And the manga is structured in a way that it feels like you're the one meeting her. The main character is given just enough personality and backstory to feel like a real person, but is left blank enough that he can be filled by pretty much any reader. He's not even given a name. And maybe that's why reading this manga felt more personal than pretty much any other up to that point. I was the one who sat down in my chair that night listening to her story, mesmerized by how beautiful everything was. And at the end, it was me that said, good morning, goodbye, as the book ended and I moved to another manga to read that day. Thankfully, contrary to the main character of the manga, I can revisit her anytime I want. I just need to reread the manga, and so I have. Time and time again. The first time I did was... Oh, I don't exactly remember when. I'm not like Eminon, remembering everything. But it should be around 2011. At the tailgate of it, I think. At the time, it wasn't read by anyone I knew. I mean, it's still not massively popular, but it is popular enough. But back then, I swear to God, I couldn't find anyone that knew who Eminon was for the longest time. In 2012, I finally tried to create a place for Eminon fans, and so I created the Eminon fan club on my name list, and I proceeded to find every single member on the website that had Eminon on their favorites and invite them over. It was around 30 people, and a decent portion did accept to join, but it wasn't ever an active club. But my passion for the character was immense, to the point where I'd call myself the biggest Western Eminon fan. It felt like I was the fanbase. 
recommending it to everyone I could find, using her as my profile picture on every single social media and forum account. The solitude of finding this one character, this one story that was just my thing, was at the same time lonely, because I really wanted the manga to get more recognition, and wonderful, because it was my thing. I'm happy it got more popular, if it didn't I'm not sure if we would ever get the physical releases, and I can tell you how happy I was to find out there was going to be a physical release of Eminon in English. It was that one manga that I needed to have, I didn't even have a manga collection back then, just a couple of Inu Asano books on the shelf, which, you know, wasn't that long ago, it was in 2019. I remember how different it felt reading it physically, I read it so many times before and yet it was such a fresh experience to reread it as a book in my hands, which is why I always recommend buying the book if you can. But you may be thinking, or maybe not, but why am I making this video now? Why didn't I wait for an anniversary or a special occasion or a milestone? Well, because something happened, and to be fair it happened a while ago, I just never knew. I've been talking about memories of Eminon, but there's another manga, Sasurai Eminon, or Eminon Wanderer in the English release, which consists of two more volumes, except not really, it's three. They've been released very sporadically, as the other, Tsuruta Kenji, is pretty notable for being really, really slow with his output. Miura and Togashi had nothing on him. The original Memories of Eminon was published in 2006. The three volumes that consist of Sasurai Eminon were sporadically released over 10 years. The first in 2008, the second in 2013, and the third in 2018. That one wasn't supposed to be the last one. The manga is an adaptation of short novels by the writer Shinji Kaijo, which I guess I should have mentioned before, but meh. Memories of Eminon is a straight up beat by beat adaptation of the short story of the same name. Sasurai Eminon, however, is a chronological adaptation of all the other five that exist. While the novels generally follow a straight up plot, the timeline interconnects between them, and so Tsuruta wanted to just follow Eminon's life from point A to point B. This means that the volumes are a bunch of stories, a lot of them that set up points that are unrelated to the next. At the end of the third volume, we still have a couple things to be explained, a couple threads to be closed, which would be fine, except, like I said, the third volume wasn't supposed to be the last one, but it is. Recently, someone has fan translated that final volume, and it comes with a note from Tsuruta, dating from 2016, and an apologetic note for not making more with the manga, for not being more regular. Lemons the fact that the manga was. well, it was cancelled. And my heart sank a little bit reading that. Sure, I always thought the first volume was it, the best part, that it could stand on its own, but occasionally, even if very rarely, getting a group of Sasurai Eminon chapters translated was always a special occasion. To get to know more about her, to get to see her next new adventure, even if it wasn't as good as the first, it was good, and I loved it. I can always reread the manga, and I will. I don't think I'll ever stop reading Eminon. But to know that this is it, that this Sasurai I read a couple weeks ago was the last, it hurts a bit. Ten years have I been with Eminon, and while again it's not truly over, it's not truly really gone, it feels like a closing chapter. Like my fleeting moment with Eminon just ended. Ten years is a lot. And at the same time, it's also nothing. Eminon said a few hours together, or a few decades, are just the same. Both are just a moment in time. And this is true for Eminon. She remembers every single second of life's existence on Earth. In 3 billion years, yes, a couple of hours or a couple of decades are the same to her. You live on on her memory regardless. But the same can be said about us regular mortals. Sometimes, memories, as short as they may be, can remain giant inside us. And despite when I'm old and dying, 10 years will probably won't look as much as they do now, these 10 years will stay special to me. So good morning and goodbye, Yamana.